Hello everyone and welcome to this month's last quick tip extension tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you some tips on coding, debugging, and exporting slash workflow of your extension. Hopefully these will give you some lasting good tips um, for making your extension process more smooth and getting updates and changes done quicker. So the first tip is going to be in regards to coding. When you're actually coding your extension, you want to maximize the amount of things you can do and look at once. Ideally, you want a large monitor, something like 1080p or larger, where you can basically load up on two sides of your screen, say After Effects or Premiere, your testing program, and on the other side, you can load up all of your code uh, so you can type things, make changes, and then jump over here without adjusting a bunch of windows and quickly loading up your extension to view the changes. And likewise, if you're using multiple programs for um, After Effects scripting and at the same time writing an extension for it, you want to have it something like split screen like this, or you can have them stacked. There's many combinations where maybe if you're working on design, you can have the CSS and HTML open and work on those at the same time. And then once you move on to more functional things, have it just After Effects on one side and uh, JavaScript on the other. That's really all the tips for coding I have because most of the coding um, abilities come from practice and just experimentation. But in general, that's how I do things to make sure they go a little bit more smoother in terms of um, writing code from scratch and making revisions. Next up is debugging. This is when you're doing updates on a script or find an issue or a bug that needs fixing, um, but you're having issues finding exactly where it is. When you're debugging, you'll want something like a split screen as well, so you can quickly add things to your code or make changes, and then you can go into the other application and see the changes. My biggest tip for debugging is to do it by using alerts or write lines. If you're using After Effects scripting or any scripting, you can use the system.writeLine function to write text inside of the JavaScript console. And you can use this to uh, basically tell yourself the variables that are coming through or how far in the code you're getting. If you're inside of JavaScript itself, we can use alert messages. So let's say I wanted to know how the process of generating all these buttons is going. Before I generate all of them, I'll put an alert to say one. When it's complete, I can put an alert to say done. And to check in the incremental uh, values, I can just alert to I every time it goes through. And I can save that and quickly update it. And now you can see I'm getting to the beginning of this part of the code by seeing one. Then for each time through it goes through, it's gonna alert the letter I for me, telling me how many buttons it's generating. And sometimes if you add this during many for loops or complicated processes, you can get too many alert messages. So sometimes it's easier just to put the alerts outside of any for loops, but if you're having specific issues inside of the for loop, you may want to place them inside. So now if I start it, I can get one, and when I'm done with the for loop, I get done. So using alerts or right line functions inside of JSX code is incredibly useful to let you know how far in the code you're getting. If in this case, I put it for a JSX file and run the extension, I can tell that I have different alerts coming from the JS and the JSX and then I can have specific messages telling me how far in the code I am or what variables we're dealing with to see how far it makes it. So you can see it says I'm inside the JSX and I've gotten this far. And if it really comes to the case where you don't know what the issue is, you can go as far as to put an alert or a message at every single line until you don't get to a certain message and to see how far you get. This is of course very annoying and a brute force way of doing things, but it's the final resort if you can't figure out what the problem is. And my last tips are in regard to exporting and packaging up your extension in terms of that kind of workflow and making sure once you've made the changes or the bug fixes to your extension, you can quickly save it, obfuscate your files and do all the things you need before distribution. So it's important that you have the folders that you're using to both um, store the extensions in and create the packaging and all that inside of your favorite section of your file browser, whether it's Finder or Windows Explorer. For me, I have my actual Adobe extensions folder on a favorites here, and then I have my sort of backup with all of my signing tools and folder and installer backups um, in a different extensions location on an external drive. What this means is when I'm done doing a bug fix or doing something updated on an extension, I can quickly go into my extensions folder with the actual raw code. I can then copy and go over to another window on the other side and load it into whatever processing I have to obfuscate my information or just put it straight into a folder to be zipped up. 
And this will just allow me to quickly go through and do what I need to do, such as um, obfuscating my files and preparing them to be packaged up very quickly. It can also be incredibly useful to have um, sort of like a copy paste information to put into your terminal if you're doing complicated uh, code signing. But it's just, again, very important to have all your folders in like a very easy to access and organized location. Because now that I've done the copying and the file obfuscating, all I have to do now is go into a folder, put it into the main folder it belongs in, and then it's ready to be packaged up and sent out. And if you want to go the extra mile, you could also have uh, specific folders for installers on each of your computers, which I have. I have preset installers that I can pull up to quickly modify, but I also have all of the pre-made installers I have for extensions I've already worked on in their own folders, nicely organized, so that I can quickly access things. Obviously, you don't want to copy this workflow one-to-one, -one, but it gives you tips on how to basically generate your own workflow and get things working much faster for yourself. It's all about optimizing and finding the slowest parts of your workflow, whether it be when you're obfuscating files or copying and pasting them or bug fixing. Hopefully these tips I've learned throughout the years will help you when you're making extensions and make your lives a little bit easier. Thanks for watching this whole month full of extension tutorials, everyone. Next month, we'll be back to normal scripting extensions and maybe some other tutorials coming up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below, as well as hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly. And you can check out the extension information and follow us on Instagram down in the description down below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below as well. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.